Hey everybody, Hatcher here with gaming news, reviews, and tips, and we're back in the cockpit of our F-18 here in DCS World. And today I wanted to go through the manual startup procedure for the F-18. Now, just for reference point, you do have the auto start feature if you want to take advantage of that. It takes just under four minutes to do an auto start with the computer starting up for you. Uh, this method here will take you just over four minutes. So it's going to be a little bit longer than doing the auto start procedure. But hey, you're not sitting in a cold and dark cockpit for four minutes doing nothing. And it's great for immersion. So I'm going to have a link for the kneeboard uh, below. And I'll also put it in the forums, uh, the Eagle Dynamics forums. Uh, so that if anybody wants to download it, you're more than welcome to do it. And this YouTube video is really meant for a reference. So if you're going through the startup and you're like, hey, I'm not exactly sure what it means... Uh, with the kneeboard, you can actually refer back to this and know exactly what I'm talking about there. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, startup for the F-18 as we sit here on the carrier. So first and foremost, we need to start with the battery switch to on. That's by our right hand. Battery switch to on. Next, we can move over to the fire test switch. Uh, we want to move that to A. Fire test switch is over by our left hand. Now we need to let that uh, hold that the entire time and let it cycle through. Okay, now that it's done, we can go ahead and release. We need to wait 10 seconds and then we're gonna move on to firing test switch B and we're gonna hold it till it's complete. And then we wanna turn the APU on. Now this startup has really allowed me to come mo become more familiar with the cockpit and where things are. Um, and uh, so th that's a side benefit from doing the startup yourself. Okay, now we're on to step five to turn the APU on and we need to wait for the green light to turn green after we do turn it on. So the APU is right over here. So it's on, you can hear it starting up. Now we just have to wait for this ready light. And we're good. So our next step is to go ahead and turn the engine crank switch uh, for the right engine on. So it's on and if we take a look at the IFE here, we're actually starting up and once we hit 20 RPMs, uh, we can go ahead and so if you look at step 6.1 at 20 rpm throttle uh, to idle so the default uh, button assignment for that is right shift and home I've got a hot key set up for that so I've gone ahead and pushed it and you can see now we're throttling up and we have to wait till 60 before we go to our next step now the next step is going to be to uh, turn the bleed air valve clockwise from normal to normal so we're at 66 now. Bleed air valve is over here by our right hand. We have go ahead and, and we've done that. It's moved around. Uh, so it's all set. Now we can go ahead and turn on our monitors. So the left EDI is on. The HUD turned on. Right DDI on. And MPCD. is on. Great. Uh, now we turn the left EDI to the FCS page. That's on support FCS. So we've got all of our errors up there. Uh, next, step 10, the INS switch to ground. And now in this case, since we're on the carrier, I'm going to push it to CV. So it is now on CV. And uh, now, now we can start up the left engine. So step 11, engine crank switch, exactly the same as what we did for the right engine. Wait for it to get to 20, and then we can go ahead and the default uh, throttle to idle is right alt and home. So it's at 20. I've gone ahead and pushed the button. It's gonna continue to throttle up. Once we get to 60, we can do the FCS reset and the oxygen uh, turned on. So that'll be step 12 and step 13. They're both in a similar uh, area over by our left elbow. Okay, FCS, reset, and oxygen on. 
Uh, now, step 14, radar to operate. Radar right down here by our right elbow. Operate. Uh, flap set to auto. And now we can go ahead and do our FCS bit test, step 16. So in order to do this, we need to hold the FCS bit switch, which is actually this little switch right over here. Again, I've got a key binding for that. Uh, the default is Y. While we're holding that switch, we need to press the FCS OB OSB. So that's right over here. So we're going to go ahead and hold our Y and push that once. It takes us to this screen. We push it again. And that'll actually do our FCS bit test. And if you turn around and look, you'll see that the flaps are moving. So they're going through, uh, moving to their extremes. And we're just going to wait for a series of beeps. That'll tell us the test is done. And we'll see the go indication. There we go. So that is all set. Now we can move to step 17, flaps to half. Uh, rudder trim switch by our left elbow. Uh, we need to push that button. That'll set our rudder trim. Perfect. And we can confirm over here. Stabilizers are now set at 12. And then uh, we're almost into the home stretch here. The SAI cage knob to uncage. That's right over here. Just one little click to move that red indicator over. Now we go ahead and close the canopy. And we'll have our last three steps, ejection seat to arm, INS to nav, and park brake off. So there we go. That just set the ejection seat to arm. Uh, we can go ahead and switch the INS to nav, and then park brake. All set. All right, so that completes the startup procedure for the F-18, uh, cold and dark. Again, uh, once you get down to it, it really only takes a little over four minutes to get it started up. And for me, that's a heck of a lot better than sitting in a cold and dark cockpit while I just let the computer do the startup. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, video. If you did, please give me a like, send me a comment, and uh, go ahead and download the uh, startup procedure kneeboard if you would find that useful. Hope to see you in game.